Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> and this is... Bee McQueen. We're gonna discuss beetles. Beetle! And what's the difference between a standard beetle and a super beetle? Do you know? Bee knows. I know now. So many people are telling me that this is not a super beetle. So we're gonna demonstrate as to why it's a super beetle and what makes this a very unique super beetle. Because there aren't a whole lot of these that made. They're actually very, very limited production for only two years. After that, they changed them up. So we're going to have a walk around these. We're going to have a look and see what they are. As always, licky, likey, comment, subscribe, pluck the dingle belly. We get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all of our different social media links. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll be back right after the intro. This right here is a 1969 Beetle, just your standard run-of-the-mill Beetle. Super Beetles hadn't come out yet. They had just changed the body style on it the year before with a shortened hood. They changed up the dash pad. It turned out they put a plastic crash pad in the front there. And the rear end was the first year for IRS on all Beetles versus 68 where they put IRS only on the auto stick Beetles. So things were actually a little bit different in 1968 versus 69, but that was the beginning of the second generation Beetle. Next to us on the other side over here, we have a 1972 Super Beetle. This was the second year for Super Beetle. It is a later model Beetle where they changed up a lot of things. Right off the bat, you can see that there are two major differences between these two cars. B, I'm gonna let you elaborate on what you see from where you're standing at. From where I'm standing yeah. at? Yeah. What's different about these two cars? more bulbous hood on the Super Beetle. Yeah, you see that that has a much bigger hood than that of the standard Beetle off on the other side. Now the reason for that is because they made the trunk bigger. So first thing we're gonna have you do is we're gonna have you open up the trunk here on the standard Beetle and tell me what it is that you see. What do you see? Spare tire. Spare tire, and how's it standing? Kind of vertically, right? Yeah. Kind of vertically? Kind of vertically. Let's go ahead and pop open the other side and tell me what you see. Ah. Whoa, how's the spare tire stored in there? Laying flat. Laying flat. <laughs> First and most obvious things that distinguish a Super Beetle from that of a regular Beetle. So for those of you that were saying this wasn't a Super Beetle, you're wrong. <laughs> 1972 was the last year for this Super Beetle. This is a 1302 Super Beetle. They were going to call them 1301s, but due to a licensing problem with some other French automaker that had a 1301 car already, Volkswagen reverted to a 1302. They just skipped the number. 1303s came after this. And you might be saying, hey, what's a 1303, Duckman? Well, a 1303 is a Super Beetle just like this one, but with a curved windshield. So you can say that all curved windshield beetles are super beetles. That is absolutely correct. But not all super beetles have curved windshields. This was the beginning of that generation. The reason why the windshield became longer and curved outwards is due to US safety standards. They didn't want to have the windshield so close to the driver's head. So what they did was they bulbed it out. It wasn't for more visibility because it certainly didn't do anything for that because your seating position is still in the same spot. You're still looking through the same sized hole. <laughs> so based on your aperture and where you're sitting at, really the visibility didn't change at all. But the hood did get bigger because one of the things that people complained about is they wanted more trunk space. In addition to that, to make more trunk space, they installed a McPherson front strut suspension. So you might be familiar with the old torsion bars of yesteryear that you found on the standard Beetles. These actually use what is even modern today, a McPherson set of struts. And you can see them right up there in the top on each side of the trunk. Those are actually the tops of the struts. And yes, you can put a strut bar across it too if you're performance minded, like one of the Honda kids, they put them across there. You can do the same on a Super Beetle and build it up more rigid. Now these drive a little more modern. Uh, some people could even say they feel a little more refined. And on a racetrack, they'll get a few tenths of a second faster. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't really care for these too much. So when I call it a stupid Beetle, I mean it when I say it, because uh, these never really caught on and were discontinued in January of 1980. And you say, well, no, no, they, they killed them in 79. Well, that's true. January of 1980 was actually the last point of manufacture for the 79 Beetle. Believe it or not, you can actually look this up. The VIN numbers ran all the way through January of 1980. So if you get a 1980 Beetle out there that's manufactured in that time, we're talking incredibly rare of the rare. And it's going to be a Super Beetle, and it's going to be a convertible. 
<clears throat> now the standard beetle over here on the other side, these are the ones that I've always loved. These have a standard torsion bar style suspension. They are very easy to modify, very easy to change parts on. Super simple. There's four bolts holds the whole front end. Well, actually it's six technically, but it's four bolts that holds the beam to the chassis, two that hold it to the body, and you can pull the whole front beam out of there. Super Beetle, a little more complex, a lot more parts to it, and things are quite different. Things are quite different. Let's get to the interior. Let me show you what the difference is with these dashboards, because yes, there's a difference. What's the first thing you notice about that dashboard? It's a dashboard. <laughs> well, look at the top of it. It sits pretty high. Particularly the damage. Right here. You see all the cracks that are in it. Mm -hmm. These dashboards on late model Beetles starting in 1968 had a crash pad on it. Once again, US mandated. I don't think any of the European models had it. So what you're looking at there is, uh, is a late model Beetle. Now this being a Super Beetle, it does have an early model dash. Now, as I mentioned, 71 and 72 were unique years for a Super Beetle. That things were a little bit different, and this is the case that you're looking at right here. It's actually a standard Beetle dashboard. Not all Super Beetles had the uh, kind of lumpy, multifaceted dashboard. This is a standard flat dashboard that you find on an earlier Beetle. It's actually, these dashboards, I think, were the same from 1960. Somebody's going to correct me, because when I actually changed these, and they kept them the same over all the years after that. Except for Super Beetle. Super Beetle was the exception, and it was only with the introduction of the 1303, the one that came after this, in 1973. What's the first thing you notice about the dashboard? There's damage in the same places. Actually, it looks like exactly the same dashboard, doesn't it? Except mm -hmm. for the paint. Yep. The uh, owner of this actually did the previous uh, paint work to match all the little dash pieces. It's the same padded dash that you find in the 1972 Super Beetle. They changed them in 1968 and kept them the same on all standard Beetles all the way through and Super Beetle 7172. So yes, this is normal for what you find on a late model Beetle. How about that? Definitely. Did you learn a little something out of Super Beetle stuff today? I did. You did? A little bit. And standard Beetle is the way to go. If you're going to get a Beetle, I say still get a standard. I just like them so much more, there's so much more that you can do with them, and I think it keeps the unique shape of them. Afterwards, they just look a little weird to me. <laughs> Alright, you see that windshield on that Beetle? Yeah. This is a Super Beetle, as you know, very similar to my 72. Okay. It's either a 71 or a 72. I'm not sure how to discern which one is which. I'm sure there's a minor difference, but because I don't follow Super Beetles, I can't tell you too much else about them. But it does have a flat windshield on it. And that's what people keep telling us is not a Super Beetle, but when you look at that hood, it's incredibly obvious. Now, the red beetle behind you. Check out the windshield on there. Perf. Yeah, big difference, huh? Mm -hmm. You see the huge shape? Yeah. Walk directly in front of it. And you'll notice it's very different proportioned. The hood is kind of short. Yeah. Remember I mentioned to you, you asked if the hood was shorter on the other one? Mm -hmm. That one does have a short hood. Okay. Because when they butted the windshield up against it by moving it forward by a lot, they had to shorten the hood as a, as a result. Okay. So that's why it turned out the way it did. Huh. And this is a 73 and up. So it's okay. probably a 73, 74, 75, 6 or 7. Not an 8 or a 9. You know how I know? Hmm. Because 78 and 79 were only convertibles. Oh. Um, yeah, they were limited edition. Volkswagen was supposed to be discontinued at that point, but uh, they were still selling them, and apparently whatever U.S. law was that stopped them from impact standard blah 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 mm. got delayed until 1980, and I believe it was like February of 1980. So you may actually find a 1980 Super Beetle out there with a sticker on it from 1980. It was still a 79 model a year. <laughs> were they still assembling them in, um, in other countries? Yes, okay. but Germany, no. Germany, they killed them after that. In that case, uh, all Super Beetles were dropped, standard Beetles only, and it was only in, I believe, Brazil and Mexico. Okay. I don't know too much about Australia and South Africa. But they did have some different stuff there, but... Oh, this is sad. Yep. This is a fastback, just like my Ruby. I've been following this project, and as I was teasing about a little bit earlier in the video, uh, Don never finishes anything. <laughs> <laughs> so that's his fastback. Yeah, those ain't no good. All right, you ready to get out of here? All right, start saying bye. 
All right, other than the fact that you notice that this car might be missing a bumper, that's because it was taken off by the actual owner of this vehicle. And yes, this car is going back to the owner sometime very soon. Maybe as soon as today, tomorrow, Monday. It's coming up very, very shortly. This thing is getting out of here. And this is good because I need the space because I got other stuff coming in here that needs to be worked on. And maybe when I have the shop, it'll be a different story. But right now, I've just got so much stuff in my life that I need to downsize and get some things out of here. And that includes this Super Beetle. is going to go sometime eventually, too. I'm going to play with it first, of course, because you kind of got to. You know, you got to do what you got to do. And I'm going to enjoy it at least a little bit before I get it out of here. But anyways, you guys, I hope that explains the difference between a standard Beetle and a Super Beetle. Did I help you to understand a little bit of the difference there? Yes. It's your first time experiencing this. Yes. Uh, the good thing for you is there's no such thing as a super gear. There was only one Carmen gear. There was a low light gear, which the fenders were a little bit different on. But for the most part, the car was generally the same as what you're familiar with. And the gear, I think, always had a padded dashboard, even since the beginning. They put a pad on the top and a pad on the bottom, and it was a middle strip through the middle. Metal strip through the middle. And sometimes they put like a wood grain piece on it. Sometimes it's just black plastic just it's almost like it was paint. They could have just painted it, but no, they put a plastic piece over it instead and just covered it. Hmm. <laughs> so that car doesn't have it. That one's actually painted body color, which I prefer. It looks nicer. It's yellow. You know. We'll make it blue on yours. But anyways, everybody, as always, like you like it, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dinglebilly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Now check out B. B's got her own Facebook. She's got her own Instagram. She's got her own Patreon. Is there anything else you got now? Twitter. A tweeter? A tweeter. She's got a tweeter. I never Water. play with my own tweeter, so that's out there, but yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you want to find links to these things, you're going to have to hit up duckshit.net. You'll find my Patreon, her Patreon, our Instagrams. Everything that you need to find is going to be on duckshit.net. So please hit up that website and please have a look. And uh, as I said, don't forget to comment, subscribe, link you like in the video. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks much. Bye. Okay, B. Sorry. Oh, playing with your boobies. <laughs> this is B McQueen. That is B McQueen. This is B McQueen. <laughs> you gotta like. Do it wrong. Like, kind of like that. With no curve in your lower back. I don't have any curves anywhere. <laughs> well, yeah, I got this. It's like a camel. Because I like the hump. All right, this, as we know, is a standard Beetle. This is a 1969 Super Beetle. And, uh, I said it wrong. Yeah, let's try that again. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know the difference either. <laughs>